so in our last lecture we were discussing about uh, multivariable control multivariable decoupling and uh, i talked about introducing two new uh, elements dynamic elements into my controller so this t21 and this t12 these two are two new elements that i want to introduce into my dynamics of controller so now controller block will be 1 2 3 and 4 there are four elements in the controller just like your process has four elements which uh interact uh interaction uh, uh, specifying the interaction between both the inputs and both the outputs likewise uh the error which is uh for with respect to the first measurement and the error with respect to second measurement is actually used through two different blocks okay is used through two different blocks so uh it's a multi variable controller and the idea is to introduce these two blocks t12 and t21 in such a way that effectively you have two decoupled loops okay i want to do it in such a way that the two loops are not connected effectively okay so this is called dynamic decoupling and if you can achieve dynamic decoupling then you can have a uh, easier or better control of the process because um now how do you design a decoupler so i'm going to do this in very simple case for a 2 by 2 case uh there too we'll see that we'll end up into some problems uh but uh, nevertheless this is a good step before going to really advanced control if you can uh, realize these kind of uh, decouplers through conventional digital control hardware like uh, plc or uh dcs then you can improve the closed loop uh, performance okay so now what i want to do is to introduce this new element i want to introduce this new element in such a way that uh let's go back and see what is u11 here u11 is influencing through t21 it's adding to u2 okay it's adding to u2 and this u22 is <coughs> adding to u1 okay so this u11 plus additional element which is coming here that is my u1 and this u11 which is coming out of this first controller that goes through here it adds to uh, this another element another uh, u22 which is coming from here and then that together forms uh that so what i want to do is to introduce this element in such a way that as if this is a separate loop so this coupling i want to remove okay i want to remove this coupling so <coughs> uh if you do the algebra okay you want to see to it that the effect of cross linking of that is effect of u22 u11 uh should be so i want to choose i want to choose this element in such a way that uh the effect the effect which is traveling here back on u11 that should be zero and the effect which is traveling here uh the effect of effect of the first controller on the second loop should be zero effect of second controller on the first loop should be zero and that gives me these uh two equations i want to choose t11 and t12 such that you cancel the dynamics the cross dynamics okay i want to choose t11 and t12 such that you cancel the cross dynamics now <laughs> uh t this should be t12 
okay so uh, i want to have these two two decouplers designed in such a way that uh, the effectively two loops become decoupled you have to do a little bit of algebra to come up with these two equations uh, you can you can do that by substituting and trying to find out the closed loop uh, equation i am skipping the in between steps uh, it's just simple uh, algebra so what the the trouble here is that i i am designing these two decoupling elements t12 and t21 so which are functions of the process model okay so it is very very important that if if i want perfect decoupling between the loops my model is perfect okay now perfect model is actually uh, only a concept in uh, you know in book there is no perfect model okay only if you are doing computer simulation you will have a perfect model because the plant is perfectly simulated and you can have perfect decoupling so there is a trouble when you want to do this implement this uh, this kind of decoupling but nevertheless it's a even if you have approximate models it can do a uh, good amount of decoupling if you uh, employ this simple approach yeah if they have right hand zeros there is i will come to that so this is not this is not see this is i am introducing this more as you know before i go to multivariable control i want to talk about something which has been done historically this has been a step in between okay so i'll talk about the fact that this is many times not possible to do okay so what you say is right if it has right hand zeros then this becomes unrealizable if it has dead time i'll show that it will become unrealizable if there is a dead time you will get when you divide two transfer functions you will get sometimes dead time which is positive which means the present value will depend upon the future value so it is not realizable okay so uh so many times like the problem which he is talking about is uh what if what if when you do this uh inversion here that is g21 upon g1 uh, g22 g21 upon g22 it may happen that uh the this t21 has some poles which are unstable okay if this happens okay then it is not possible to realize a unstable transfer function through unstable means you know the uh behavior can become unbounded the output can become unbounded it is not possible to realize this so there are there is trouble when you when you have to actually physically cancel the dynamics like this okay you are trying to introduce two additional elements which will nullify the cross dynamics that's what you are trying to do and that makes that makes uh things difficult because it is not possible to cancel dynamics always it's difficult to cancel dynamics uh now one intermediate way which is which i would say is not uh, perfect decoupling but you know you can do something called gain decoupling which means don't worry about the dynamics okay just look at the steady state gain of this two elements look at steady state gain of these two elements and then do decoupling then it is not going to be then if you do gain decoupling you are not going to get into this situation it is not possible you are not going to have perfect decoupling but it is something is better than nothing so you uh so uh you know this this gain decoupling is something which you can try if uh, if this uh, t2 and t12 are not uh, realizable or you do not have perfect models for whatever reasons you don't want to do this uh let's go back to this wooden berry column just as an example um in this case uh if i do steady state decoupling okay i just have to look at the gains okay and then i can introduce two class elements t11 t12 and then uh, i get these these two decoupling gains okay these decoupling gains will try to reduce the interaction they will not eliminate interactions okay will not really eliminate interactions so this is only a uh, a little bit uh, you can say ad hoc way of getting over the problem of but nevertheless you can do this also you can in this particular case you can actually design uh, two decoupling elements and if you implement these decouplers together with two pid controllers then you will get perfect separation between two loops which means what is the meaning of that if you change one set point okay the other the other loop will not get disturbed at all okay only one one 
uh, if I want to change the distillate composition, only distillate composition will change. Nothing will happen to the loop for bottom composition. That's what it. That's what it means. So, uh, for this particular case, it's possible to realize these. Uh, realize this uh, particular uh, decoupler. Now, uh, I just want to uh, point out uh, the, the same concern which uh, one of you had. What if uh, the decoupler is not realizable? That can happen. Okay. So uh, now all that I have done is I have just shuffled the rows here. Okay. So uh, now the input is S. Earlier it was R S. Okay. The first input here was R. Second input was S. Now I decide to do couple, you know, decoupling the other way around. Which means uh, I will look at this transfer function now. So my T1, what is my T11, T12 changes now? Okay, and uh, I decide to do controller pairing the other way around. XD and S and X, S, XB and R. That means bottom composition controlled using top uh, reflex flow rate and steam flow rate used to control the uh, top composition. Uh, this is in reality you are not going to do this. Okay. But I am just going to give, I just want to give an example where things can become not, uh, I mean the decoupler can be unrealizable. If I, if I take this particular configuration and then design the decoupler using this formula which we have arrived at, uh, you get this, you get this here uh, decoupler which is, if you, if you notice here, okay, uh, here you have e to the power plus 6. S right, yeah plus six x. What does it mean? It means that you know the current output will depend upon the future input, which is not possible, which is not possible to compute. Okay, we cannot compute something which is now based on something that is going to happen in future. So, uh, well, as human beings, we keep doing that, and we will be looking at something called predictive controller later, but. To realize a differential equation, which depends upon, uh, you know, the present behavior depends upon the future behavior, is is difficult. It's not possible. So these these two uh, decouplers are not realizable. The previous case, the decouplers are realizable. In this particular case, the decouplers are not realizable because you get here positive dead time, and which would mean that. The current value will depend upon the future. If you convert this into differential differential equation, you will realize that the current value will depend upon the future value, and then you cannot implement this uh, decoupler. Okay, so decoupling. I just don't want to get too much into detail. We probably will have some problems to solve in the assignment, but and you will get some idea. But decoupling probably you can use for some small system, two input, two output, or maybe three input, three output. But this decoupling is a limited, uh, it has limited power because the model has to be perfect. You can do this gain decoupling in simple situations and then you can implement this. The main power of this is that you do not need any special software for doing advanced control. You can implement these ideas of decoupling through a normal distributed digital control system hardware, DCS hardware or programmable logic controllers of the shelf which you get in the market. You can use them and actually implement these decoupling ideas. Okay, that is that is nice about this, and you can deal with some small dimensional systems in terms of multiple input, multiple output, two by two or three by three. But uh, beyond the point, this doesn't help us. Okay, I just want to give an example. I want to move now to multivariable control. Before I move to multivariable control, I want to give a motivating example as to what is the difference between single loop controllers and multivariable controllers. Does it pay off going for some advanced control? We are going to look at a set of advanced control algorithms uh, which are very, very popular in the industry. What I am trying to do is, uh, at the, after we do all this, uh, I am going to call uh, one of my uh, uh, hostel mate uh, who uh, works with Yokogawa and he will present case studies of whatever we study here in the class. Uh, so he will pr present industrial case studies, one or two industrial case studies depending upon the time. 
uh, where he has actually implemented these model based controllers uh, for control of chemical plants. So, uh, to set the background, let us look at a very simple problem. This is a problem of a reactor and do not bother if you are not a chemical engineer, you can appreciate the control problem very easily. In this particular system, uh, you have a reactor in which some feed is continuously being fed in, you are drawing the product, okay, you are drawing the product. Let me draw a simple diagram here. So, this CSTR stands for continuously stirred tank reactor. So, this is a system which is like this. This is a cooling jacket. Now, I feed in some Okay. Now this is my this is my CSTR stirred tank reactor. So uh, you normally show a stirrer here, which indicates that all the contents in this in this in this reacting mixture are well mixed and the properties are uniform. So temperature is temperature of entire mixture is same. Concentration inside the entire mixture is same. What I'm doing is uh, I'm pumping in some fluid here at the rate of f and whatever overflow in this tank goes out so flow which comes in f it goes out let's assume that there is a very simple reaction here uh, simplest of the reaction will be a going to b isomerization okay and then you have this cooling jacket there is a coolant which is being pumped in here Okay, this coolant is being pumped in here, and the coolant temperature is TCIN. Uh, there is a this inlet flow rate is uh, inlet flow rate is of a component A whose concentration is A naught, and a reaction occurs here. It gets converted into B, and what you get out is concentration a okay so this is this is my this is my simple system uh, a very very idealized representation of what happens in a chemical uh, reactor and uh, what i can measure here what i what i can measure here is temperature inside this in the in the uh, this reacting chamber so i can i can measure temperature okay I can measure temperature here. Okay, the level is constant. Level is constant. Actually, I would like to know what is concentration of the product. This is my product which is coming out. Okay, and I would like to know what is the concentration of the product. Okay, that is my key variable. But the trouble is, many times it is very difficult to have online measurement of concentrations. It can be very very costly. Uh, temperature can be measured very easily. It's, it's very cheap. You can buy a good commercial temperature measurement system in say about twenty thousand rupees. I mean, I'm talking about uh, from a very uh, uh, you know uh, good company. If you uh, if you if your application is uh, doesn't demand very high accuracy and you can even get for five thousand rupees, you can get uh, a good temperature measurement system. Whereas the cost for concentration analyzer. Uh, just concentration analyzer offline would go to something like 4 to 5 lakhs and if you want to go it to online it could be 10 lakhs or 15 lakhs it will be very very high and that too is possible only for certain uh, variables okay uh, so i have temperature measurement here uh, and then this uh, in this particular system uh, you can uh, you know, uh, you need to. There are controlled outputs R two. That is, controlled outputs are. Uh, well, the simplest case is that controlled output is temperature. 
but ideally i would like to control uh concentration and temperature these are the two controlled outputs let's not right now bother about the fact that concentration measurement is very costly temperature measurement is very cheap let's assume that uh, you know both of them are measured and available to us somehow how they are measured let's not worry okay so these are controlled outputs there are two manipulated variables this inlet flow rate here and the cooling water flow rate this fc which is here so these are manipulated variables and then the disturbances are so these are my disturbance variables okay so the concentration of the feed which is coming in is a disturbance it can be fluctuating uh the inlet temperature of cooling fluid this could be just tank water over a tank and it could be fluctuating it could be changing with time as in a during a day the tank water is not going to be constant so this could be changing so these two are disturbances i can manipulate the inlet flow rate i can manipulate the cooling water flow rate okay and i want to control concentration and temperature inside the reactor very very simple problem okay so now uh i decide to put two controllers okay uh so this is my this is my system cstr system uh they are governed by two differential equations rate of change of concentration and rate of change of temperature uh i have listed here the variables that uh, we need to uh typically typically we will have only temperature measurement but right now we will not uh, we will not worry about that right now we will worry about we will we'll say that both concentration and temperature are somehow available for doing uh, closed loop control uh, well what if temperature measurement is only what is available and concentration measurement is not available what do you do i am going to answer that quick that question soon i'll be starting on something called soft sensors model based sensors and that will start today itself so we'll be we'll be going to that but for the time being assume that both both the measurements are somehow available i decide to put two pid controllers okay i have chosen one configuration here ca concentration is controlled by manipulating cooling water flow rate temperature is controlled by manipulating the inlet flow rate i could have done the other way around i have chosen one particular configuration okay now i'm just showing you what happens i'm just what happens if i give a step change first of all what is the meaning of two loops are coupled see here i'm comparing two different performances one performance is when i have not taken care of any anything for decoupling between the two two loops okay that is that is this blue line okay and this black line is when i have implemented uh decoupling steady state decoupling gain decoupling i have implemented okay so i just want to show that implementing gain decoupling gives you a huge improvement in the closed loop performance now this is concentration profile this is temperature profile what i have done is i have kept i have put two pid controllers now two pi controllers to be precise these are the tuning parameters for pi controllers and uh if you see here i have given a set point change at time 5 minutes in concentration but i want to keep the temperature constant i want to keep the temperature constant okay i want to manage this change i want to manage the transition in such a way that ideally i want to manage transition such that temperature should remain constant and only concentration should change that is my ideal behavior okay now that of course when the two loops are interacting that is not going to happen because of the interactions there are oscillations also the system has uh some other reasons to have uh, uh, oscillation so this particular system you see that the time it requires to settle when there is no decoupling is very large okay it takes about 25 minutes 30 minutes to settle for the temperature perturbation concentration per perturbation also settles up after about uh, 25 or uh, 20 minutes after you have introduced a change what if i introduce decoupling 
if I introduce decoupling, steady state decoupling, okay, only gain decoupling, then you see there is significant improvement in the performance. The departure from the temperature from 94 to you know 6 degree departure which occurred here does not happen here, it is it is perfectly uh, you know around the desired set point, there are oscillations, they die down little faster, okay. So just doing this gain decoupling, simple measure which you can implement through a DCS or through a programmable logic controller will improve your performance to some extent, okay. Now uh, this is how the two, uh, if you introduce decoupling and do not introduce decoupling, this is this 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 one is with decoupling and this one is without decoupling. I should have color coded this. Uh, so, these are the manipulated input variables. Uh, how <coughs> okay. Uh, now, uh, I want to control, I want to actually, I want to. Uh, uh, compare multi variable controllers and uh, show that you know how much improvement you can get through multi variable controllers. So it is like you know uh, telling you the uh, end of the novel right in the beginning that this is where we want to reach okay this is the kind of uh, improvements that you get if you implement multi variable controllers um, and then we will again start looking at the story from the beginning. So I want to implement a multi-level controller, I am putting a, a little unknown name here, linear quadratic optimal control which is what I am going to cover as a part of the course. So um, right now we saw two things, we saw the comparison of two multi-loop controllers no decoupling and two multi-loop controllers with decoupling, with gain decoupling. With gain decoupling we got some improvement in the closed loop performance, okay. Now, uh, now this is this is one of one more experiment in which uh, what I have done is again uh, uh, you know right now first time what I am looking at is multi loop PI controller no decoupling okay. I have given I have decided upon one experiment, experiment is give a set point change at k equal to 50 and give a step disturbance in uh, one of the disturbance variables at k equal to 150 okay. So there are two things the controller is expected to do, reject the disturbance and move the uh, system to the new set point okay. So this is this is the point where I introduced a uh, step change in the set point and at this point when this concentration is about to settle okay, uh, I have introduced a uh, disturbance. Now the simulations which I have done here are have been I mean I have tried to make it more realistic by putting in measurement noise okay fluctuations that can occur in the flow. So I have tried to do a realistic simulation okay because the measurements which you get are always corrupted with some noise then there are always some unknown inputs in the plant. So I have introduced all that to make it realistic and see how it looks okay. So you can see that uh, when the disturbance is introduced you know there are a lot of fluctuations here and uh, obviously just looking at this even if you are not a plant operator you will say well I do not like this response because first of all uh, here it takes long time to come to uh, settle to a value and then disturbance rejection gets into some kind of oscillatory behavior we do not like this controller okay uh, these are the input uh, which are what if I do decoupling if I just do gain decoupling there is some improvement okay. If I do the same experiment with the gain decoupling, then you know it, it is reaching here faster. Just compare here. It's it's reaching faster, and then this oscillation seems to have reduced to some extent. So this oscillations, this oscillations are a little less, right? And here too, this is dying faster. Okay. So if you just do gain decoupling, you have some advantage over what you know just having two loops. So it definitely helps and if you do not have resources to implement a very complex multivariable controller gain decoupling is a good solution. So I do not want to reject gain decoupling but I want to improve upon the gain decoupling when I go to multivariable controllers. Okay, These are the inputs which are, uh, so this is the disturbance which, has, which was given at point 15 minutes or sampling instant equal to 150 and 
uh, well what i have done here till now i simulated the plant i simulated the plant using linear differential equations i i took uh, non linear differential equations linearized them took the linear differential equations and called it as a plant okay and then i did all this two pi controllers pi controllers with gain decoupling or whatever uh, simple gain decouplers thing seems to work the real plant is non linear okay in my simulation what i have done next is i took the same same decoupling controller and changed the plant to non linear simulations more realistic i am trying to be more and more realistic okay if i try to be more and more realistic in my simulations well gain decoupling which seems to work in the ideal world of linear models doesn't seem to work when i go to non linear plant okay see when i am doing this simulations we will be doing now simulations i am putting that up whole thing so you have a choice how do you simulate the plant behavior in the computer i can simulate the plant behavior using linear differential equations i can perturbation model i can simulate the plant behavior using original non linear differential equations which is much more realistic than actually uh simulating the plant using linear differential equations so linear differential equations if you do everything your algebra is nice everything works fine okay moment i go to non linear differential equations and the controller is still linear control is not non linear you have still pid controllers with some simple gain decoupling okay you have trouble when you want to uh, implement this so what it means see when i design a controller what i would do is first i will simulate the plant using linear differential equations perturbation model design the controller do simulations after that before i go to the real system what i will do is i will remove the linear simulation put non linear simulation that is more realistic and see whether this controller which is based on linear system theory does it work if it works it gives me confidence to go to the real plant okay that's how i would step by step uh, check my controller but if i try to do this for the decoupling doesn't seem to work okay so i have trouble here pi with gate gain decoupling just don't even think about two decoupled two pi controllers which are independent and not talking to each other if i go to non linear plant it becomes a chaos it, it starts oscillating okay so uh, moral of the story is that uh, if i design two independent pi controllers without them talking to each other you can have trouble in a real plant okay uh, with this simple example just two variables to control and two variables to manipulate you can imagine what happens when you have large number of inputs and large number of outputs i want to move to this uh state feedback controllers that's what i'm going to start doing from today uh, well by the time we reach state feedback controller design it will take probably end of this month uh, we have to do a lot of things in between but what is the basic idea here look at what i'm going to do here uh well this is my plant this is my plant this is model which i got you know this model i could have got from either from physics linearization discretization or i could have got this model from data time series modeling state realization and then i got this model whichever way i got this model i have this model now i want to design what is called as a state feedback controller state feedback controller is this is the gain matrix okay this is the target state where i want to reach and i want to put a negative feedback for the state so i am assuming here for the time being that the state is perfectly measured okay now we will have to relax this assumption because in reality the state is not measured only y is measured but uh, for the time being just leave that aside why am i going to do this because this way when i do this is a model which is multiple input multiple output model if i design a controller of this form it will be a multiple input multiple output controller okay it will simultaneously change all the inputs okay when you ask it to do something it will not change one input at a time one there are it's not like n drivers there is one driver one gain matrix which simultaneously modifies all the inputs simultaneously that is that is very very important okay so uh there are three steps here when you do this you design this controller by assuming that x is available then you design something called as a state estimator we'll start talking about state estimation today uh the state estimator will construct estimate of state from the measurements of y and then you mer merge the two you marry two you know you take the controller you take the state estimator merge them into one big controller so 
State estimator provides estimate of the state. A nice word for state estimator would be soft sensor. It creates an estimate of the state using um, measurements available and then you use that, you use those estimated state to implement the control law. So this is, this is a method which we are going to look at is called as quadratic, quadratic optimal control uh, which has been used. Now just as I said, uh, you know, uh, end of the novel, I am just putting it in the, flashing it in the beginning. This is what I get if I implement a LQG controller. How am I going to do LQG controller? You know, that is a mystery that we will solve over next uh, whatever, 15, 10-15 uh, hours. But you can see the difference here, okay. This is a perfectly decoupled kind of uh, response. You know, when I asked it to give a set point change, it just went from here to here as if it is a, there is no dynamics, okay. And there was a small blip here but then it returns to uh, returns to the, the state. This is like ideal control what you can think of. This is perfect decoupling, okay. If I give a step change here in loop 1, okay, only, only variable 1 changes to the new value and this there is a small blip but then it comes back, okay. Just, just compare this behavior with this, this behavior or same experiment, mind you same set of experiments, step change followed by a disturbance, okay, exactly same experiment. But now I have used a controller which is of this form, okay, I have designed a controller of this form and you can see the benefits. When I gave a disturbance here, you can see a blip here, when I introduce the disturbance, it is just a blip, I again as if nothing happened, you know, you have a perfect control here. Well, you might say, well, you have a linear plant simulation, linear controller, everything is nice, that is why it is working. What if I go to non-linear plant, okay. I move to non-linear plant, not too much difference, it is still able to handle the situation, okay. There is some offset, you can see here, looks like there is some small offset, it will take care of that, that is not an issue. But uh, you know, the behavior this has slightly changed, see this has slightly changed. When we moved from linear plant simulation to nonlinear plant simulation, there is slight, uh, are you getting what I am saying about linear plant simulation and nonlinear plant simulation? I will just draw a diagram here. So I am simulating this closed loop, I am simulating this closed loop, this is my plant, there are two inputs and there are two outputs and this is my controller block. So this is my Y1, Y2 u1, u2, this is u1, u2, this gets the disturbance d and this also gets two set points r1, r2 and this is y1, y2. So it gets, uh, the controller gets y1, y2 feedback, okay. I am not drawing those lines because it will look little complex here. but you can imagine y1 going here and y2 going here. There are two set points which are fed to the controller. My controller is kept constant. How do I simulate this plant? How do I simulate the plant behavior? I have a choice, okay. I can do it either by doing, you know, x k plus 1 is equal to phi x k plus gamma u k and y k is equal to c x k. This will be my linear plant simulation. If I if I solve these difference equations together with the controller equations, it will be linear plant simulation. Other alternative is I can actually solve dx by dt is equal to f of x u and whatever f of x u d. So this this I can and y is equal to some h of x 
So this I can solve solve using ODE solver. So these are nonlinear differential equations, and I directly simulate the nonlinear differential equations of the reactor. Okay, if I do that, it is nonlinear plant simulation. If I simulate this linearized model here as a plant, it is a linear plant simulation. That's what I mean. Okay, everyone, everyone with me on this? Okay. Okay. So <coughs> look at this. If I if I do linear plant simulation, okay. Linear quadratic optimal control gives me near perfect control. Nothing can be better than this. Okay, there is there is settling time is almost you know one twentieth of what you get for PID controller. Okay, so actually actually what you can achieve through advanced control, multivariable control is far far superior than what you can do with multiple PID controllers. You just cannot you just cannot go there with multiple PID controllers. Okay, uh, of course to implement advanced control you need much more uh, uh, knowledge about uh, modeling, estimation, control, and so on. Uh, so even though now those tools are available, they are not being used because you know lack of uh, awareness and lack of uh, you know background required to implement those advanced tools. How it is being used? No, no. So what? Then you know what we do is we retune the PI controllers. When you actually go to the see, so you have to keep keep changing the PID tuning parameters till even after decoupling, they are kind of satisfactory. Now, how do you do that? Because you know there is a mismatch between the plant and the model, and then it's not what you see in simulation is not working in reality. So that is you know that's where the operator experience will come into picture or engineer's experience. He will just go and say, okay, I know you release this gain by ten times, and you know. He will put some conservative values. It will work. Yeah, I mean, people do it iteratively. So that's not a great way of uh, going about. Okay. Uh, even here, maybe you know, if I had done some trial and error, I could have made it settled. I, to demonstrate, I have just you know not tried to do any tuning. I have just said that take two loops, do decoupling, and see what happens. Okay. So if I blindly apply the method which I have in the literature, it's not working. When I go to nonlinear simulations, okay. So maybe I can do something more, you know, add some more masala and then try to make it a little, uh, uh, what do you say, more cautious controller, and then it might somehow work. But it is very difficult to get this response. Whatever I do, yeah. For this one, PID controllers I have used uh, standard design uh, to, uh, methods given in the. So this each one of them. Each one of them have been, you know, designed using some one of the standard PI controller tuning methods. I took the transfer function, then you know, uh, you look at pole placement or whatever. There are methods of tuning PI controllers. I have used them faithfully, and then, okay. So, uh, so this is what I want to get. This is where I want to get. I want to get a near perfect control. I want to get very good decoupling between the loops. So. Uh, you know, so that is so. Even when I go to non, see, when I go from linear, you know, there is a this one short, uh, you know, uh, step here, and then it comes back. But then here, when you go to non-linear plant simulation, there is more oscillation, little more oscillation, but still it's able to control. It's not the 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 controller is as good. So now, how do we go here, starting from? Uh, Multi-loop PID controllers. As I said, I don't want to spend too much time in this multi-loop strategies decoupling. I just want you to make aware. Uh, you should be aware of such things exist, and in case you don't have access to, uh, uh, you know, implementing uh, model-based controllers, you should. You can probably think of doing this. So, multi-variable processes are difficult to control. That is the first message from these two lectures, uh, because of loop interactions. Okay, so the life becomes very, very difficult when you move from your first course in control, where you only worry about one loop, to multiple loops. Okay, it's not, it's not so easy to design a controller. Things like RGA, SVD are, yeah, they'll give you some help. Okay, they provide some systematic way of pairing and um, 
uh, you know handling uh, reducing the interactions and and so on but of course they have their own limitations it's not many of these tools are based on gain they don't take into consideration time constant and so on and then uh, simple measures uh, may not always work like decoupling may not always work so there is a motivation to go for you know uh, something much better something much superior okay so i want to get a controller which gives me this near perfect behavior and that's what uh, okay so these are the two references which i have used for this part of lectures and now with this very brief introduction to multivariable control mainly as you know motivation for what we want to do next and also to keep you aware of uh, you know other tools what is if you don't have um what gain decoupling is to do at the steady state at the steady state but then damage is done during dynamics anyway to some extent right you are not nullifying the the damage during the dynamics you are only nullifying the damage long term damage you are trying to nullify okay so uh, that does help it's i'm not saying it doesn't help so uh, as i said if you if you don't have uh, if we cannot implement some very advanced control strategy this is this is this will improve over existing multiple pid controllers because decoupling together with multiple pid controllers is like a multivariable control okay it's a it's a intermediate between a full fledged multivariable control and uh, decoupled pids which don't talk to each other here when you put those ga cross gains there is a see there is a there is a attempt to communicate information between two loops right and somehow try to compensate for action of one loop on the other okay that is the basic idea that's what you should the take home message is that when there a decoupler is implemented there is attempt to develop a dialogue between two loops okay which is which is not there when you have just two loops which don't talk to each other so introducing decoupling whether it is steady state or dynamic or whether it is even steady state forget about just using gains is still better than not doing it at all okay and as i said you don't require any special hardware for that if you go to plant now and you you, you will get a standard uh, hardware which can actually implement this steady state decoupling it's not big deal what is the advantage of decoupling steady state decoupling i'm not discarding it totally computations are very simple you just multiply by a gain and add to the other value you know when we go to this multivariable controllers we will realize that they are very very computation intensive i am going to solve an optimization problem online okay and it's going to be very very computation intensive it's not going to be easy okay so implementing those multivariable controllers getting to what i showed you lqg or whatever it's not going to be easy task it's going to take me at least you know till uh, mid april by the time we reach all the things that are involved but uh so so it has its own place it can be implemented and particularly if you have a system which is which has very very fast dynamics okay for example you are looking at uh, automobile control problems right it might be worth doing decoupling because you don't have time to compute online you know you need computations in fraction of a second if you need to decouple two loops just by putting some gains which you know create a dialogue between two loops nothing like it okay it's very very simple so it has its it has its power it is simple at the same time it has its limitations you cannot do you know best decoupling that is possible okay okay so now i'm going to start on this new topic and this will take me at least five more lectures uh and this is an integral part of modern control that is uh, soft sensing is a i would say is a nice word to understand the uh, that's why i have put it here soft sensing but actually technical term for this is state estimation okay so what is state estimation let's let's start looking at this and this is uh, one of the main building blocks of my state feedback controller okay so i have a state space model 
I have a state space model. Somehow I have got the state space model. I want to develop a controller based on the state space model, but the states are not measurable. Okay, the states are not measurable. I want to estimate the states using whatever is measurable. That is my, that is my first task. Okay. So, well, of course, I'll talk about why you want to do state estimation. I'll move about a fundamental property of a system called observability. I'll talk about. Uh, when fundamentally you can estimate or you can reconstruct a state just given the measurements. Can you do that? That is a fundamental problem. And that, that relates to some properties of the matrices that are involved. We will form a problem of estimating state using a batch of data and we will find soon that that is not useful in online context. If you collect a batch of data and estimate the states <coughs> in online, the batch size will keep growing and then you cannot manage it. So, you need uh, what are called as recursive estimators. So, we will spend time on development of these recursive estimators. We will move on to optimal recursive estimators. What is the best way of designing the recursive estimators? So, here what I will come to what are called as Kalman filters, Kalman estimators. These are a celebrated algorithm developed in early 60s. Actually, this is culmination of research over many, many years started with Gauss. So, uh, the batch estimation problem was formulated by Gauss and then, uh, you know, the later developments which were more computer savvy appeared obviously when the computers became available and being, started being used. That was in 60s, early 60s. So, Kalman filtering is nothing but the original least square estimation problem recast for doing online estimation. So, uh, elegant solution, recursive solution. Uh, I am not going to talk about extended common filtering. I will show you some simulation examples about, uh, so what is the motivation? Okay, so uh, just now I was talking about this reactor and in this reactor we said that uh, concentrations are not measurable, are not measurable many times online, even if they are measurable they could be very, very costly. Okay, they are very, very costly and I do not have money to uh, just buy, you know, there are so many concentrations which are required in a plant. I do not have money to buy a, you know, concentration sensor everywhere and then there are variables which are very difficult to, uh, you know, measure directly. For example, if you have, uh, if you are controlling, uh, in a, in a, you are producing a polymer of certain quality, you would want to control its molecular weight, uh, estimating molecular weight. Uh, or measuring molecular weight online is not a trivial task. Okay. You can measure viscosity, you can measure density, you can measure temperature, but you cannot measure molecular weight online. No, that is difficult. But nevertheless, your property that you want to control is molecular weight. Okay. So, that will decide the property of your polymer which is coming out. So, what is desired is something different, but what you can measure is something different. Now, can I estimate what is desired? That is the thing, that is the main uh, so, sometimes you may have measurements, but they are irregular, offline and developed, you know, found once in a while. Okay. So, in such case, I want a continuous measurement. I want a measurement which is coming at every sampling instant so that my controller can take action. Okay. Now, there are other problems which are modern problems which did not exist say 20 years back. Now, you have wireless sensors. Right, uh, and a wireless sensor uh, has packet losses, and I'm sure every day you uh, experience packet losses when you try to uh, use your mobile phone. Okay, there are packet losses. Signal reconstruction is bad, and you don't hear what the other fellow is saying at the other end. So, packet losses in a wireless transmission is a inherent problem. Same thing is true when if you try to do now, many people are going for wireless plants. Okay. Sounds good, but there are dangers. The data packet losses are there. Okay. We have, we have one such beta site in our, in our lab. We tested it wireless control for Honeywell about three, four years back. So, uh, all the temperature sensors, all the walls, everything were fitted with a device which would transmit and receive data. And you have a wireless controller sitting somewhere 
some i have a computer which is uh, far off and then we are just communicating through wireless in the room and then trying to control but there are packet losses if there are packet losses there is information loss and then there is a trouble because you know my all control theory works with regular interval sampling this is possible when you have dedicated lines data lines okay but moment you have wireless you have uncertainty creeping in so there is a gain because you know you are cutting on the wire, wire wiring cost huge cost reduction because of wiring but uncertainty increases there is a price to pay now that's where this state estimation can come into picture if you have irregular measurements and if you have a model then you can reconstruct missing measurements that is the idea of soft sensing that okay i don't have a measurement right now but i have a model i can reconstruct i can predict and estimate and i can use the estimated value for control rather than the measured value so that's that's what i'm going to do in soft sensing yeah you need a wireless transmitter yes wireless transmitters probably can be done cheaply they are not so i mean if you can have a mobile phone 50000 rupees <laughs> wireless transmission may not be that uh, costly just look at the mouse no? you have wireless mouse or keyboards now which are wireless mouse with some 300 rupees so they are able to have a wireless transmitter receiver in the mouse okay which is must be less than 20 rupees otherwise you cannot afford to sell that thing for which was no no but wire also you know you have to maintain all those wires and then wires have all kinds of problems you know a real mice can come and eat <laughs> the wires right so maintaining those wires is a big problem it's not so easy so i mean each one has its own pros and cons some some cases it's good to have see in some cases you have very hazardous environments okay so where wiring can be difficult right so wireless transmission can help in such cases so no i don't know i don't think so. i don't know to to give a conclusive opinion whether wireless is faster or wired is faster <coughs> so there are always parameters that are not directly estimable but you would like to measure them okay so if you have a model you can actually construct uh, so what is the remedy what is the cost effective remedy you have a model use the model in the computer and estimate the missing measurements from use of model the main thing is some measurements are available so i should make use of those measurements and use the model use them together to construct this soft sensor okay how to merge the model and data that's what i'm going to do next that is this soft sensing all about okay so what is this state feedback controller let me just go over it again the aim is to develop a state feedback controller so the way we design this way we do this we assume first when we design the controller the controller design we are going to do a little later but at that time we are going to say somehow the states are going to be a, available they are measurable i'll design the controller okay so that is controller design step then uh i'll design a stable observer what is a stable observer i'll come to that state estimator so only certain measurements are available can i reconstruct the states from these measurements and the model that is observer design so actually step 1 step 2 step 3 uh, which order they should come has no meaning probably one should design the observer first or one should design the controller first so i am choosing to design i am choosing to do step 2 first and i'll do step 1 later okay so that 1 and 2 has uh, no meaning uh, what is uh, what of course has to happen is the step 3 has to happen after step 1 and 2 so i can after i design the observer and controller then only i can merge them and then uh, you know uh, see observer is mathematically when you try to put it it looks very very formidable but uh, observer or estimation of unmeasured state is something which happens you know we also keep doing every day all the time for example doctor you know he is trying to estimate uh, what is the you know what is the faulty condition inside your body he will ask you to do some measurements right go and take some blood sample and then he will take uh, blood pressure 
and he'll uh, put stethoscope and take ask you to breathe so these are the measurements which are coming and from this he has to back calculate he has to back calculate the state of the body okay now it's it's not a easy task because same measurements same faulty measurements can be obtained for different diseases and so you need more and more measurements of course to uh, separate the thing but state estimation is basically this you have some measurements and there is what you want to know is whether it's malaria or typhoid or whether it is uh, you know bronchitis and then you take some measurements and then from that you estimate uh, the uh now what guarantees that you can design a estimator separately and control the separately and then merge the two and work there is something called separation principle we'll look at that later so which guarantees that at least in the nominal case in the perfect model case you can design controller separately observer separately merge them together still the closed loop will be stable so uh so let's let's uh let's start with this uh as i said uh of these two components one of them i have to do first i choose to do observer first then i'll move to uh controller design okay so let's begin with this model this model we have okay and as i said right now i am not worried about how this model has come from it could have come from linearization of mechanistic model it could have come from uh data completely and toolbox some uh time series modeling toolbox and state realization so uh so there are the three steps which are oh this repeat of the slide and then i want to do uh, the state feedback controller design which is of this form this is where i want to reach okay finally uh so the major question is like this i'm going to separate measurements coming from a plant into primary measurements and secondary measurements okay uh primary measurements are ones which can be done at a fast rate okay a secondary measurement would be one which is done intermittently see for example uh let's take the doctor and patient analogy uh if you admit a patient uh, in uh, say icu you can keep uh, track of pulse rate uh, continuously bp you can uh, you know uh, have some monitoring system that measures bp but if you want to measure blood glucose you know you may not have an online blood glucose measurement i mean now people are moving towards that but it is right now not uh, so cost effective that you have online blood glucose measurement so you will take samples in between so the samples which you take for blood glucose will be secondary measurements but pulse rate or bp which you are measuring suppose by putting some device continuously you will get online measurement of bp okay for your plant plant is now a patient who is uh sleeping out there yeah so we will have to worry about uh, can we increase the samples can we uh, so there are many many issues ideally you should but even if you are not you can develop models which are which can take into account variable time delays see we are not getting into all those multi rate systems variable time delays in this first course i mean i probably have to teach one more course if i want to start talking about those issues in practice see what actually i am doing here is 101 of advanced control when you actually go to plant it is much more complex you have to built upon what i am teaching you okay so uh many of these things are too simplistic easy to understand mathematics but then uh for example you may not have a situation where the time gap between two samples is constant they might be variable then you can develop discrete time models with time varying it's possible to do that okay i'm not talking about it because you know those are too much of details you can once you know this you can you know graduate to something which is more complex <coughs> okay so what we know is that let's take let's take a distillation column chemical engineer or let's take this reactor which we are talking about we know that the temperature and concentrations are related 
ओके सो इफ आई जस्ट मेजर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन कैन आई एक्सप्लॉइड द फैक्ट दैट टेम्परेचर एंड कॉन्सेंट्रेशन आर रिलेटेड थ्रू थ्रू अ मॉडल एंड रिकन्स्ट्रक्ट माई कॉन्सेंट्रेशन मेजरमेंट दैट्स वॉट आई वॉन्ट टू डू ओके सो बेसिक आइडिया हियर इज टू मर्ज ऑनलाइन डेटा विथ मॉडल एंड क्रिएट एन एस्टिमेट ऑफ अनमेजर्ड वेरिएबल्स क्वालिटी वेरिएबल्स एंड वेल देर आर डिफरेंट वेज ऑफ डूइंग दिस ओके जस्ट एन ओवरव्यू यू कैन डू इट यूजिंग देर इज अ वे ऑफ हैंडलिंग दिस थ्रू यू नो न्यूरल नेटवर्कस एंड एलजिब्राइक मैप्स लाइक वॉट यू आर लुकिंग एट पी सी ए एंड पी एल एस एंड दोज काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स द अदर वेज ऑफकोर्स यूजिंग डायनामिक मॉडल्स वॉट यू कैन डू थ्रू डायनामिक मॉडल्स इज मच मोर रिच एंड कॉम्प्लेक्स दीज आर सिंपलिस्टिक सोल्यूशंस लाइक को रिलेशन्स यू नो यू डेवलप अ को रिलेशन बिटवीन टेम्परेचर एंड कॉन्सेंट्रेशन बाय सम doing some offline experiments and then online you just put that correlation and say that if temperature is this concentration is this so these are those simplistic approaches which are clubbed into one side okay but those things have limitations you cannot do it uh, beyond a uh, uh, well we are going to look at uh, two classes of uh, dynamic model based soft sensing one is using stochastic approaches okay and the other one is using deterministic approaches uh the stochastic approaches one is the so called celebrated kalman filter which was developed by kalman uh i think 62 or 63 through a seminal work and at the same time almost at the same time uh this work by leonberger which appeared in the literature completely deterministic approach completely different way of looking at the problem okay two people are looking at the same problem with two different tools okay and by now these two are major research areas in control okay stochastic observers and deterministic observers people of course are not still looking at linear systems they are looking at non linear systems so these actually here this represents a branch of modern control and this represents another branch of model control i am going to talk about the first two developments that occurred right in the beginning okay so as i said we are just going to look at 101 okay so going back 50 years um so uh let's go back to our old uh, cstr system we will have um there are two measurements uh, there there is only one measurement there are two states concentration and temperature i only want to measure temperature i cannot afford to measure concentration okay uh there are two manipulated variables but manipulated variable values are known to me i am giving them from my computer okay so my controller is whether my controller is advanced controller whether my controller is pid controller i know manipulated input values okay uh so these two uh feed flow rate and coolant flow rate are known to me okay there are two disturbances inlet concentration fluctuation this one is an is an uh, or feed concentration that's a un unmeasured disturbance i cannot afford to measure this i cannot afford to measure the product concentration forget about measuring the inlet concentration so concentrations i am not able to measure well the the temperature of the coolant which is coming in that is also fluctuating that is also a disturbance but i can afford to measure it okay temperature measurement is cheap i can measure inlet coolant temperature i can put a tank in my overhead uh, reservoir and measure the temperature not an issue okay so my question is if i have a perfect model okay can i reconstruct or can i estimate concentration from temperature alone so these are the parameters and then what i'm going to do is of course i'm going to do linearization of this model and then uh, you know you know how to get this model okay i at some operating point i got this the operating point is given in the previous slide and then you get this linear perturbation model where the two states are perturbation in the concentration perturbation in the temperature two inputs are perturbation in the flows and so on and then i will discretize this model i'll get this discrete state space model 
okay now i have this discrete state space model with me let's assume that it is very good model it, it matches very well with the plant behavior in the small region in which i am operating there is not too much of plant model mismatch the model is good okay and my y here is only temperature measurement see it is 0 1 only temperature is being measured okay and now uh now here i want to do a state estimator that will reconstruct concentration from measurements of uh, temperature alone let's move on to the problem which we are familiar with uh as i promised i will take you to the lab and show you this system uh in this particular system i have four tanks again you know level measurement is costly each level measurement uh, device it cost now well in when i fabricated this system in 2005 it was 30000 so i'm sure it is now 60000 you know so uh good quality i think those are yokogawa uh, or some very good quality uh, level transmitters each one is 60000 i cannot afford to buy two transmitters four transmitters but i want to measure i want to have an estimate of i am measuring level here i am measuring level here and i want to have an estimates of level in tank 3 and tank 4 just using the model this is a cost effective solution running a model in my computer doesn't take too much no i just have to buy one laptop which is or some control computer which is anyway going to be there so i'll use that computer to reconstruct okay uh so <coughs> so given this model i have this model now okay uh well of course there are troubles because the measurements can have error measurements can have error here okay measurements are not perfect and then we have we have talked a lot about measurement errors some time back when we talked about system identification okay and colored noise and colored disturbances and all kinds of things so even if you take a very simplified view that this v here is a white noise even then it is there right so there is some error in the measurement we never get perfect measurements this d here is unmeasured disturbance okay there are concentration fluctuations in the reactor at the inlet i am not measuring them but they are affecting the dynamics and then i need to estimate the state so estimating the state in presence of these two trouble makers one is the measurement noise and the other one is inputs unmeasured inputs that are going into the state dynamics is not an easy task it's going to be quite tough so what is the problem the problem is i have a model now see earlier uh the model the problem that we are looking at what was the problem that we were looking at earlier the problem that we were looking at earlier was given input and output data okay we wanted to estimate phi gamma psi and c matrices that was a modeling problem identification problem okay now i am just turning it around i am saying that well i know phi i know gamma okay i probably know psi i know c okay and i know y and u y and u are known input is known output is known okay can i reconstruct x related problem okay in one case what was known and one case what is known is just turning around now i am saying i have the model okay i have data for input and output i want to reconstruct can i estimate the state this is the abstract way of saying can i develop a soft sensor for the system okay as i said grand old problem grand old problem being studied from the days of gauss you know when even before that if gauss came up with a solution people were looking at this problem much before uh, and the classic uh, example or classic uh, system which uh, human race was bothered about was planetary positions you know exact knowledge of planetary positions uh, by the time gauss worked on this problem you of course knew the differential equations that govern the system okay and you have measurements coming from telescope can you estimate the state of each planet okay that is uh so <coughs> so let's take a situation let's let's go by let's go very very slowly 
I am going to take a situation initially where there are no disturbances. Okay, I am not going to worry about measurement noise too much in the beginning. I will systematically go towards that point, how to uh, deal with measurement noise. So let us take the most ideal case. Most ideal case is there are no disturbances, zero disturbances, there are no measurement errors. Okay. Now I have a perfect model, Okay, everything is perfect, model is perfect, no disturbances, no measurement errors. Now the first question that I ask is uh, given this model, given this model and then measurements uh, under the scenario that there is perfect model, okay, no measurement noise, no state disturbances. Can I reconstruct x0? Can I reconstruct x0 from measurements of y? Okay, so let us start answering this question. Okay, uh, now let us let us call this initial, see to, to use this model, what is what is known here in this model? Phi is known, gamma is known, now we have done modeling, u is known, u is known. Now suppose I want to do a simple online estimator, a simplest online estimator is use this model online, you will say use this model online. Okay, you know, you know what is u. Okay, keep giving u to this model. This model will predict what is x. That is a soft sensor, isn't it? A very, very, and you would be wrong. It's fine. It will give you a very crude soft sensor. Yes, if you if you just use this model in my computer, I just program this model in my computer. Now the trouble is, when I start this model, what should be x naught? What is the initial state? See, I do not know what is the initial state of the plant. If I give a wrong initial state, this model will go somewhere, the plant will go somewhere. Okay. I do not know, I am not measuring x0, I am only measuring y. Okay. So, to kick off this model, minimum information that I need is x0. If I have x0, okay, and if I know input sequence u, I can just use model and then I will get x. X, x naught is known, u naught is known, phi and gamma is known, I will get x1. Okay. Then if I know x1 and u1, I can get x2 and I have a soft sensor, isn't it? This is this is fine. I mean in the ideal world, computer world, you will get this. Uh, <coughs> okay. So uh, I can get I can get this x1. If I happen to know x naught, if I happen to know x naught. Then I can compute x1, then I can compute x2. Okay, but what you will realize is that x2 actually depends on x0. Okay, it depends upon u1 and u0, u0 and u1. Okay, what about x3? You will see that x3 also depends upon in the dynamic system, dynamic system has a memory. It also admits new inputs. You can modify its behavior. You can give inputs u1, u2. They will have influence on what happens in future. But the past also will have its effect on the future. Okay, very very important. So now the question is, how do I find out x0? Okay. But if you guess, then. Uh, No, no, in this case there is no uh, measurement error, there is, so I do not want to guess, I want to come up with an exact value and which is possible, okay. So that is what I am going to say now, that uh, <coughs> see I can write this first equation, C0 is equal to Y, C X0 is equal to, right. Then my second equation will be C X1. I am just using those previous equations. Okay. Now, uh, see, and this equation I am going to rearrange because what is not known to me, x0 is not known to me. Okay. Now, y1 is known to me, c gamma u0 is known to me. Okay. So, that I have taken on the right hand side. Okay. I can just go on doing this. Okay. So, I have collected all the terms 
on x naught on the left hand side all the known quantities y is known u is known all the y and u terms that appear in my equations i am them taking them on the right hand side okay so now Okay, so what happens here is, uh, I think it's eleven. Let's let's do it in the next class. Let's stop here. So we have these equations. We have these equations. Uh, I can stack them together because see what is the coefficient here? C. Here it is C five, and it will be C five square, C five cube, and finally it will be C five n minus one. Okay, so I can stack all the equations. Together, what is not c is c is known, phi is known. Only x naught is not on the on the left hand side, okay. And uh, everything on the right hand side is known, okay. So it's like solving n equations in n unknowns. You know, when does the solution exist? Okay, we will find a fundamental property of the model here called observability, which comes down to rank of this particular matrix. This particular matrix will appear. and you can show that if this matrix has rank n then alone you can reconstruct state from the measurements if the rank is not equal to n then you cannot get all the states from the measurements you may have to add more measurements to make system observable so this is the fundamental property of the system called observability we'll relook at it again starting from the next class so you can design an observer for a system if this fundamental property is uh satisfied by the system equations otherwise you cannot okay